of frustration. Full of despair. From years of hurt, disappointment and relegation. Two British football fans have had enough. Canary Bird Elliot Holman and Wanderer Henry Hewitt are in search of glory, pride, passion, in search of silverware. And they found Major League Soccer. Welcome to another episode of the MLS UK show. I'm Elliot Holman. And I'm Henry Hewitt. And once again, loads to talk about as MLS rumbles on. Starting to see a few patterns maybe in uh, in who's going to be strong this year, ones to watch, who's maybe needing a roster overhaul after just a few months. Yeah, exactly. We've had our first head coach uh, firing as well, which we'll t- talk about. And uh, I've noticed there's a few teams after we've been praising them throughout the season so far have now like not won in four or five yeah. games. So yeah, it is. It's kind of panning itself out a bit. Uh, but then naturally, we will still have some stuff that happens every year, which means that Seattle will end up top of the conference despite being what eleventh now, are they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the comeback will be on. Um, so uh, last night I was doing a little bit of prep because I knew we were recording for the podcast. Mm. Um, so I was watching some of the highlights and I was delving into some stats and then got really distracted. Um, for those of you who uh, have enjoyed the kit reviews over the years uh, from Henry's now wife, Poppy. Yeah. Um, her, I don't know if we've ever explained this. Her family own a farm yeah. in Yorkshire, um, Barnsley, Leeds Way. Uh, and... <laughs> They've got their own TV show, <laughs> yeah. which is not normal. It's not normal that I'm watching like my best <laughs> mate's wife's family on TV. Uh, and it's springtime on the farm, the, yeah. all the lambs being born. And I'm like, that's Poppy's dad. Yeah, you were there at the wedding talking to him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah it is. It's got normal to me now, which is it is odd because uh, when I'm at the farm and I'm, I'm with Dave, Farmer Dave, as he's known, and people are asking for his uh, autograph and selfies. That is a bit weird. But yeah, that's on. And uh, tonight, as we record, it's a Tuesday. If you're in the UK, you'll be able to get it on the Channel 5's catch up service. If you're in the States, I'm sorry, I don't think you'll be able to get it. But um, they they go to they, a few months ago, they spent a few weeks in Texas uh, <laughs> learning about how farming does out there. They They've done rodeo. more work in Texas for a farm show than we've done on an MLS podcast. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did say to me, he said, listen, Henry, I'm trying. I don't know what I can get you out there as. Probably can teach you makeup maybe and you can be our makeup artist. I don't know. But I said, Dave, if we go to Texas... I'll just be heading to uh, the free stadiums and you won't see me for dust. It was pre... This was done a few months ago, so it was pre-season, so there weren't any matches on, or else I would have definitely gotten a plane <laughs> and be like, right, I'm going. You go off to some rodeos, film that. I'll I'll watch some MLS. But yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting tonight. I'm looking Hen- forward to it. Henry's more known for being part of this uh, famous farming family than he is for... M- the MLS UK show. Yeah, um, I've got a couple of. Um, yeah, I'm known for a couple of things. So when I got, uh, I went to a party the other day. It was uh, somebody, uh, an actor, because Poppy works on Coronation Street, a TV show in the UK. Um, and one of the actors was leaving, so I went to their leaving party, and I got introduced to someone, and it was like, "Oh, this is Henry. This is Poppy's husband, but he's also producer Henry, who also produces a podcast. But he has an MLS podcast as well, so he's also Henry here." So I was like. Yeah, you can call me Henry. Um, if you want to call me producer Henry, that's fine. But I'll also be Poppy's husband um, today. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, I've got a, quite a few little fingers in pies, I think, is the The term. best way to describe this farming show uh, uh, of the family that you're now a part of is it's like keeping up with the Kardashians, but on a farm. <laughs> yeah, with pigs and uh, lambs and uh, horses. But uh, no, yeah, check them out. Cannon Hall Farm. Um and if you go and tell them Henry sent you, uh, they'll kick you out. Yeah, they'll kick you out. Mm. But um, no, it, that's so that's that's kept us entertained because we yeah we're doing this on a Tuesday. I don't know if it is in America, but Monday uh, the Easter Monday is a bank holiday here in the UK, mm. so uh, we're not going to work on a on a holiday. So it's why the podcast is coming out a little bit later. 
But he's give us more time to analyze what's happening in MLS because there is a lot going on right now. Yeah, um, and we will get into it. We'll look back at all of the results from the weekend. Um, we'll find out how terrible I did on the predictions as usual. Um, but let's start with the game with the change in name. Yeah, uh, by the way, we are going to get Farmer Dave to do predictions. He doesn't watch football. He doesn't like it, but he'll do a lot better than what you normally yeah, do. Yeah, I, I imagine so. Um, now, this is a player who's played in the UK and in MLS. And they started their career. <laughs> you, I feel like you're going to get this straight away. They started their career at Newcastle United. Right. In 1997. They went to Bury on loan. Oh, my hometown. They Mine went, and Phil Neville's hometown. Went to Norwich on loan. Oh, my yours. hometown. Yeah. Uh, Wigan on loan. Oof. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, then Blackpool, Scunthorpe, Linfield, Livingston, Hibernian where Chris Mueller is now. Yeah. Uh, and then that well-trodden path between Hibernian and MLS, <laughs> uh, he went to Houston Dynamo, played 11 Ooh. times before going back to Kilmarnock and retiring. Oh, right. Okay. Um, my initial thought, I think I might know, does this player have a famous yes. father? <laughs> right. I know it is. Uh, yeah, I got the, I, weirdly, I got the Houston Dynamo link more than I got the Norwich and Berry link, but I did know he played for those clubs. I remember him playing for Norwich right. and I remember him warming up as a sub in front of me in the same seat that I have now in the corner front row and I remember him warming up and it was at the same time that Paul Heckingbottom the now Sheffield United yes. manager was playing for us um so wow. yeah get your guesses to us let us know uh let us know what you think to today's game with a change in name yeah must have a thing of signing Paul's <laughs> Norwich um yeah get in touch if you think you know uh right we'll put that on the back burner for a little bit that'll be at the end of the episode we find out if I'm right I've got a funny feeling that I am uh but before that let's just have a, a word from our sponsors before we recap this weekend in MLS the MLS UK show yes once again this is the MLS UK show sponsored by soccer90.com that is the place to go if you're looking to grab some MLS merch if you've been watching the games thinking don't mind that jersey Get yourself to Soccer90.com and stick it in your basket. Yes, and if you do, when you're at the checkout, if you add MLS UK in the discount code box, you will then get an extra 20% off, courtesy of ourselves and Soccer90. Uh, when I was watching the matches the other day, I was watching with Poppy. Poppy's falling in love with the goalie kits. Has she? In MLS, yes. There, there are some good ones. Yeah, some, uh, but then I noticed when I was watching Atlanta, because Atlanta played in their mint green kit that was her favourite kit, then uh, Brad Guzan was in a red kit, which really threw me a little bit. The mm. fact that he was wearing red and Atlanta. Anyway, um, yeah, if you want to buy Atlanta's gorgeous mint green kit, then go to Soccer90.com. Why would you? Um, but yeah, thank you very much for, the, for your support, Soccer90, as always. Elliot Holman, Henry Hewitt. MLS UK show. So let's have a look what happened this weekend in MLS. Um, I think we need to start with San Jose, Elliot. They drew 2 2 to Nashville, but that's not the story of the game. Uh, the story after the game was that uh, Almeida has been uh, released from his contract. He's been sat. There were rumours before the game this was going to happen. Um, now, because, as we'll find out as we go through the games, there were quite a lot of low-scoring games this weekend. Uh, we felt, in true MLS highlights package style, we needed to pad out the show. So we put on Twitter, uh, has anyone got a question for us? So across uh, our recap, and then at the end, we will be asking these questions. Uh, so the first one has come from Chris Archer on Twitter. And he says, with Matthias Almeida leaving, who should be his replacements? Ooh. Now, um, they have got a certain... Well, they've got Alex uh, Cavello in charge um, at the moment. But then they've, on the coaching staff, they've got a certain record MLS goal scorer. Yeah. Uh, I, who cares if he's even any good at this point? <laughs> I don't. Just stick him on. Makes San Jose a bit more interesting, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Chris Wondolowski. I mean, let's be honest. It's it's the fairy tale. He's completed everything there is to complete in MLS. It would be great to see him as a coach. I understand he's going to be a part of the coaching, coaching staff yeah, yeah. anyway. Whether he immediately jumps in, I think it may be too soon. Um, but I wouldn't be adverse to it. No. Um, San Jose... Uh, with Almeida went for that sort of Latin America kind of um, appointment. Uh, would you go for maybe a bit more MLS experience? I was thinking there's a certain um, 
there's a certain Ted Lasso esque uh, coach that is going to be losing his job in <laughs> Manchester in a few weeks. Maybe he could come back. Yeah, um, there's yeah, but there's also someone from Manchester who's going to be losing their job in MLS in a few weeks as well uh, in Phil Neville. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I do you know what I don't I don't know if Almeida was a bad appointment. No, I don't um, think he was. They didn't really back him no. financially. If you look back at his career, I believe, and as you can see, I'm nil research on this. I believe uh, that it's the first time that he's lost more games than he's won as yeah. a coach. Um, so actually, you know, he he's had success, so it was the right job for him at the right time. Um, they just kind of had... The, they were a weird team. And we did, if you listen back to the last uh, proper episode, I did say to you, how is he still there? Because it just was a weird relationship where they sort of like did really well, then did terribly. And like all the games were 5-4 and 4-3. And they just sort of had that no midfield, just, you know, just just vibes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Like literally, like who needs a midfield? Um, it was a weird, a weird relationship between the two. So I'm not surprised it's over. Um, but I don't, I don't think they need... They just need a bit of stability, and I think they make the playoffs. I don't think they're a terrible team. No, I think uh, when you're looking at the amount of nil nils we had this weekend, and so far this season, actually, and looking at like Chicago, I think there's a bit more defensive mm. mindedness coming to the league this year. So with San Jose, who have conceded three a couple of times, and then, I mean, you look at Saturday's, uh, you look at uh, Hani Mukhtar's goal where he ran from his own half yeah. and no one challenged him. There clearly is an issue, like you said, in midfield slash with a defence. So, yeah, you know, you someone needs to come in and, and just stabilise things, show them up a bit, and they could make the playoffs. I think you're right. I think, you know, uh, Ibo, has got, he's got two. He scored some goals this season. We have got, it's not like they're not scoring goals. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, if they were losing every week 3-0 or 4-0 and not scoring at all, then they've got a big problem. But they are scoring, so if you can sort it out of the back, then you never know. As we've seen with MLS, the season isn't over, never over after seven games because it can all change. Just our Seattle. Um, <laughs> I feel like it reminds me of when you're a kid and you play like five aside or seven aside and everyone just sort of like follows the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, what, that's what it's like. <laughs> and then on a counter-attack, there's absolutely no one left. You know, he just, you know, like you say, Mukhtar, for example, um, running th- running his way through. I just think a bit of stability. Not a terrible side. No. Um, not Not even the worst team in Texas on paper. Um, Texas, <laughs> uh, California. California. <laughs> uh, Getting ahead of myself. Though. They wouldn't be the worst team in Texas. No, no but maybe they should move. Mm. You know, we know what MLS is like. <laughs> it's not even the <clears throat> not even the worst team in California. There we go. On paper, uh, I could edit that out, but I'm probably not he going won't. to. No. <laughs> I would if it was me. Uh, right, let's move on then to the next game. Uh, well, Montreal v. Vancouver kicks things off 2-1. Um, and- Montreal, one of the best teams in America. <laughs> well, they're, they're better than a lot of teams in America at the moment. Third straight win, they're up to sixth and they're doing well. Mm, better than Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, well, Vancouver second bottom, four points. Uh, shades of El Trafico in this one with Vancouver equalising yeah. the last minute to get it to chalked off. But... Um, no, Montreal have, have really hit the stride a little bit. And it's good to see. I, I feel Montreal have got some decent players there to, to push into the playoffs. I know they didn't start too great. But no, it's, it's good to see that they've uh, they've won again. Uh, Vancouver have disappointed me this season. We we said at the start it was them and RSL who, who did quite well going into the playoffs and then in the playoffs. And we felt that they could maybe take that momentum with them. And they've not quite done that yet. Yeah, and RSL have fallen away since we praised them as well, which is pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we can talk about that now. 6-0 to NYCFC. Uh, RSL, uh, this, in, if you're... Basically, if you're someone who just likes this podcast and doesn't necessarily keep up to date with MLS, you will think that RSL, you'd have been for the last two or three weeks going, that RSL are a good team, oh, playing yeah, really good team. well. Good side. Yeah. Uh, well, they've lost 6 0, and it now means they've not won in four. <laughs> the thing is, I, I look at it and I don't forget what you've seen of the game, forget everything. Just look at it as New York City 6, RSL 0. Mm. For me, that is New York City just, just popping their heads back in, just 
Just been uh, on a bit of uh, conquer calf business. Yeah, what uh, did we say? But we're but we're back. What did we say? Like, should we worry about NYCFC? No, let's not worry about them. Their, their season starts when they're out of uh, yeah. Champions League. They got knocked out. They win six nil. Yeah. And Something we were right about. I know. And uh, you can also tell the team that are still in the Champions League because uh, they lost at home to Miami. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say, just before we move on from NYCFC, Tati Cassianos, four goals. Mm. The guy's back. And uh, it was good to see Andrade mm. score the other two. He scored four as well this season. Castellanos needed those. And this this is now. The next few games is going to d- almost dictate his season. Mm. Can he kick on from that? Can he go and get, get NYCFC 20 goals this season? and be a real, real hero for them? Or is he going to sort of continue with this form of looking really quite good and quite sharp and not quite delivering on the MLS stage? Yeah, well, before the game, when you looked at, what, none in six or seven matches, mm. now he's scored four. So yeah. he's, he's on his way there. He's on his way to 20. Uh, let's start Seattle then. Seattle nil into Miami one. Seattle find themselves 11, seven points from six games. Into Miami, ironically, have got also seven points, uh, but they're in 13th in, um, in the East. And... Into Miami, we've said every week, we say every week on this podcast, sick of saying about Into Miami, that we're not doing well and blah, blah, blah. Well, they've just beaten New England Revolution in Seattle. So we've got to give them some praise there. But we do this to ourselves because doing an MLS podcast, you're constantly scratching your head at things. <laughs> you know, Seattle do it every single year. So we just let them get on with it. It's almost like a tactic. They yeah, just yeah. We just let them get on with it. Um, Miami... Averaging a point per game at this point, you know, some teams have played more than others. We're, we're, we're looking at points per game. Averaging a point per game, along with DC and Cincinnati and New England Revolution, mm. it's so hard to work out what's going on. It is. Um, we had a question about Inter Miami from Craig K. Tips on Twitter, and he says, uh, How long before Phil Neville gets replaced with a better manager? Well, my answer to that is if he's beating New England Revolution in Seattle, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, but when you... But New England Revolution and Seattle are both down the bottom of their respective conferences. Yeah, but... It's not a, it's not an out-of-character this season result. Mm. Yeah, but it is into Miami. Yeah, fair. Uh, so, uh, go on then. Uh, do you... Because um, Manchester United did a... I think I retweeted on MLS UK a, a, a clip from it. Uh, they did an interview with Phil Neville and he spoke about Beckham and the plans they've got. And it does seem like Phil Neville... He's really a, a part of them plans. So um, I don't think he's going to get replaced anytime it soon. It seems long term. Mm. But uh, but what is the plan? Because like Cincinnati, they're now on sort of like plan three. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and so it's hard to... I know I know mistakes are made. You come into the league and mistakes are made. And you know, we laughed at Orlando for years. Well, you laughed at Orlando for years. I cried. <laughs> um, but I don't think they were ever... They, I don't think they ever got it as wrong mm. as Cincinnati and as Miami. And I, genu- I genuinely don't think, I think, you know, they missed out quite narrowly sometimes. I, I, I don't see, I don't know what the plan is with Miami. No, I've got to agree with that. I think you look on paper at some of their players and think they've got a very good roster. Yeah. In recent years, they have had... But I think it's just been like this scattergun approach of, oh, Higuain, he's good, we'll get him. Mm. Without any thought of how is the, the personality, how is the player going to fit in with the rest of the team? Because sometimes the best business is just keeping your player. Like we yeah, talked yeah. about it with Orlando, keeping that back four together. Um, and, and you know, it works. We talked about defences early, earlier in this episode being a lot stronger this season. Teams are clearly working on it. And I just think that sometimes your best business is not chopping and changing. Sometimes just going out and getting a name for the sake of it is not the answer. No, you're right. Um, so, uh, but it's good to see into Miami. Um, you know, at least get showing something in the league because I was worried that some of their results at the start of the year. I was wo- I was really worried that it was going to be another really poor season. And there's a, we've got a question about um, the teams that are, are making noise in Europe, like how Europeans. Who are they supporting? Who are they seeing? Into Miami is one of them teams. So for the league. You kind of want into Miami. You may not do as an Orlando fan, but for the league, you no, actually... I, no, I understand. You want into yeah. Miami not being bottom of the league and, and being embarrassing. Um, right, we, we kind of... 
I'm going to leave the nil-nils till last because, um, you know, without giving too much away, we are going to bring back the Eli Room 101 today. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Toronto. Henry, too. you can't put Chicago Fire in the Eli Room 101. <laughs> well, listen, it, 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 we'll, we'll see in a minute. Uh, Toronto 2, Philadelphia 1. Um, Philadelphia went 1-0 up in this game and then ended up losing. And the fact that they've now lost the only unbeaten record that was left... Mm. Got to give credit to Toronto for this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Philadelphia wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a run that was going to go on forever no. purely because it's MLS. It doesn't happen. You don't do that. Um, but you know they've only played seven seven games. Orlando second with eight, having played eight. Remember, um, and they're still comfortably ahead. Two point two nine points per game. It's still really impressive. Yeah. Still way out in terms of uh, the rest of the teams in the East. So you don't mind the odd loss. But I'm looking at Toronto level on points with Atlanta, thinking. Did not expect, you know, such a turnaround from them. Yeah, and I think for Toronto, the exciting thing is, as we know, in the summer, their their roster is going to get yeah. uh, a bit more juice added to it. So if they can be up there at that time, and they've got some, you know, a good a, one of the best players in uh, over the last ten years in, uh, in terms of strikers in yeah. in Italy uh, coming in, then yeah, there's a lot to be excited about. And this was a very good result. They beat NYCFC as well a few weeks ago, so. Yeah, it's very good. And I mean, Pozuelo scoring, it, it, you've got him up front as well. It, you, you mentioned the names. Jesus Jimenez scored his fourth this season. You've mentioned these names. You think, actually, Toronto have got a very good squad this year. They have. It's all coming together. Um, it's early early work from Bob Bradley, but it's you know it, it, doing the simple things, getting points on the board, and then building, like you say, with additions to the roster coming in the summer. Um, he's He will have a long... A much longer term plan than a couple of games into the season. What are we, seven games into the season? Yeah, yeah. But he'll be pleased with where they are. Yeah, definitely. Uh, New England got back to winning ways, beating Charlotte uh, at the weekend. Uh, Boxer made it 1 0. Then Pulsar, uh, this time, uh, Pulsar de- benefited from a deflection uh, to score. If you remember a few weeks ago against New York yeah. Rebels, his defender kicked it against him and it went in. Well, that happened again this time, but it went into the net it's meant to go into. Um, Christian Ortiz pulled one back arguably the goal of the weekend I think to Joey Stradium we'll have something to say about that I was going to say uh, arguably the goal of the weekend so 2-1 is this are we seeing New England Revolution was there enough there of what you saw of that game to say that they're going to push on now I think you have to believe they're going to finish a lot higher than they are it's the Seattle syndrome of (laughs) not starting well yeah Um, but just there's a point where you have to be sensible about it and you have to believe their roster is genuinely very very good we've seen what it can do last year Um, arguably it's it's no weaker than it was last year last season so that has in the long term over the course of a season that has to work out Um, I you know I look at the standings I'm looking at teams like New York Red Bulls, like Atlanta, like Toronto, are they genuinely going to stick around and be stronger over a long period of games? Um, I should include Orlando in that as well, by the way, um, who who are going to be put under pressure as New England Revolution start generating some results. I love that. Can we trademark Seattle Syndrome, please? Seattle Syndrome. Um, wait, Seattle Syndrome. It's a thing. Yeah, you, uh, description. When a side starts poorly, <laughs> but ends very well and makes the playoffs. Uh, yeah, the, you know, the of what I saw, they, they seem to have clicked a lot more. It was yeah. good to see New England revolution, especially because I predicted them to do quite well <laughs> this year. I think I predicted them to win MLS Cup. So hopefully for me and, uh, you know, my credibility on this podcast, they can wow. they can do well now. Uh, Charlotte will be pleased, though. They're eighth, just outside the playoffs, nine points. Um, and even though we lost at the weekend, they'll still be pleased with their start to the season. They'll possibly just want to pick up a few more points away from home, but... When you've got a home stadium and atmosphere like they've got, you are naturally going to pick up more points at home. Yeah, no, I mean, they'd be really happy with that. They'd have bitten your hand off with eighth at the start of the season if you just said, right, well, after eight eight games, you're going to be uh, just outside the playoffs. They'd have been really satisfied with that. There was a lot of talk of how they haven't quite got things right. So far, it's a, it's a much stronger start than we've seen from some uh, expansion sides recently. Definitely. Uh, right, the game of the weekend for me, DC United 2, Austin 3. I mean, mm. if you look at Kamara's first half, what an impact. This So uh, Kamara's first half included an offside goal, two goals, two bookings, including <laughs> one where he took his shirt off for a goal, and then uh, ascending off a second booking. Uh, all this in between Austin having a goal ruled out for VAR at, uh, <laughs> at 1-1. Uh, and they hit the bar in the 44th minute. Uh, so DC went into halftime 2-0 up. Now, Kamara, 
he had a message on his shirt. So I don't want to say that, you know, he obviously wanted to get that message out and that's fine. However, in hindsight, being the 27th minute and then getting sent off in the 45th minute and then seeing how a match ended, was that a bit silly of him to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We both agree on that. I'll say on that one. Um, in the second half, well, I say second half, in the last 10 minutes, Austin got three goals to win the game. Um, Austin a second in the West. I'm going to, you know, we're talking about my credibility, going to be giving you some to uh, increase your credibility. And you predicted it, and Austin have started really well. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what... I think that last 10 minutes is is everything about both those team seasons. Mm. You know, DC can't seem to get it going. Even with a 2-0 lead, they've thrown it away. Austin just really showing... Um, you know, it says in with his... Look at Austin sticker on his laptop all of a sudden. <laughs> that's been... You know that's mm. been there for the year. Mm. Can we check? Can we get a VAR <laughs> on that, please? Can we see an old episode? Suddenly they're doing well. Um, no, second in the West behind LAFC and in front of LA Galaxy. That is a stunning effort. It really is impressive. Yeah. And, you know, that comeback is is an illustration of, of why they are where they are. Um, and it's the reason that Henry suddenly dug out a sticker and put it on his laptop. <laughs> no, I, VA, we don't need VAR. That has been there for the last year. Can I get a Philly sticker? <laughs> uh, but this uh, this game brings us on to a question we got from James, a friend from DC United Kingdom. And he just asked, where's it all gone wrong for DC? Because after a, a good start to the season, I think two wins, first two games, uh, it's gone pear-shaped. Um, what is the problem at DC? Lasada ball seems to have been deflated. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be too honest, mm. but because I feel like it brings the mood down a bit. But if you look back at what we were saying about DC at the start of the season, before a ball was kicked, we were really worried about yeah. the roster, the lack of business. The business that was done was outgoings of important players. Um, and so I think when they when they did get a couple of wins at the start of the season we were a little bit taken by surprise. I don't want to say that they're where they're going to be, but they're bottom, they're bottom of the East. And it doesn't surprise me is what, is what I'm trying to say. And mm. I, I'm sorry to say that, but ultimately this is kind of what we expected. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the players that have gone out, uh, and I know, uh, for example, Luciano Acosta is at Cincinnati. Uh, he went to Atlas in the meantime, but still he, he's left and now he's come back with a, a lesser team. And I heard on Saturday during the commentary that he's had the most key passes in the league. Hmm. You know, like you have had these players that have left them, uh, Ariola, you know, that have um, a good players for MLS and they've not replaced them. Not in my opinion, anyway, not with quality anywhere near as good enough. Yeah, and then that was the fear before a ball was kicked, and obviously they got the couple of wins, but I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sold on the roster. Mm. I'm really not, and and I do worry for them a little bit going forward. Well, there you go, James. In a nutshell, uh, it's a depressing time to be DC if, United. If New them. England, we've just discussed New England. If New England are struggling with their roster mm. this season, what hope is there for a team who haven't quite got theirs together yet? That's true. Um, okay, now we'll talk about it then. I've, I've put it off long enough. Minnesota 3, Colorado 1. Uh, good win for Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, do you know what? Minnesota, I, I find, we, you know, I say this a lot. I find it really hard to dislike Minnesota. Yeah, Every, yeah. Everything about them. You know, I love the stadium, love the kit, love the manager. Um, you know, strong start inside the playoffs. Um, the only thing is they're not Orlando, which is what I thought we were going to talk about. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but no, a good win over Colorado, who, of course, struggling a little bit. Yeah, 10th uh, now, not one in four. Um, and, it, you know, we talk about momentum from last season. It seems that those sides, uh, you count RSL in, who did start OK, but uh, the momentum's now gone. And, need a win on the road. Yes, definitely. Uh, but no, Minnesota, good for them. Great win, 3-1. Um, and yeah, after two defeats, they're back to winning ways. So seventh, I, we talk about Minnesota and we say that we do expect them to be in the playoffs. Now they're seventh at the moment. Do you kind of expect them to be in and around seventh? Are you looking at them as being a team that may just break into the playoffs, but it'll be out and in throughout the season? Or do you think they should be and will be a bit higher, a bit more comfortable? Well, when you look at the teams that are in there at the minute, 
I'm thinking there's teams like Houston that you're having to adjust your brain <laughs> to accept that they are yeah. within the playoffs. And so if teams like Minnesota are going to make it, somebody has to drop out because you're going to have SKC, you're going to have Portland, you're going to have Seattle yeah. all coming, yeah. coming from deep with Seattle syndrome. Um, so someone has to drop out. So I, I think it's a strong West this year. Yeah, I, w- I would definitely agree with that. And I think that's the it's such a challenge for those sides. And inevitably, you mentioned those sides that are going to have to come from, at the moment, out of the playoffs into it. We are going to see a team like Houston or another team that's just going to surprise us. It could be San mm. Jose with a new head coach. Going to surprise us, end well and just break in. So they could be two or three sides. I mean, one of those sides naturally will be LA Galaxy because it always is. They yeah. always drop out right at the end. Uh, but, yeah, uh, they'll finish eighth by half a point. Yeah, but uh, there will be others as well. So it's a really in, uh, intriguing league this year in the uh, in the West. Now, okay, moving back to the East then. Orlando won 2-0. Get Columbus. in! I've got to say, Elliot. Come on! I've got to say, this really impressed on, me. Lay it on it me. Re- it lay really it impressed on me. me. Uh, Orlando have really impressed me so far. He's yes. Second in the league, 14 yes. points. Yes. You've had some decent results this yes. season. So, well done. Well no, well done so far. Oh, hold my hands up. Say you've done very well. Uh, Schlegel got the first. Oh, thing. Rodrigo. Yeah. You beautiful man. Uh, Cara got the second. The build up to that goal is a thing of beauty. The team chemistry is at 100%. Mm. It was all right, I guess. He hates it. He it hates right. it. It's so begrudging just because you <laughs> couldn't score at home. Well, um, yeah. It's, Against you know, Cincinnati. Yeah. Remember when Orlando lost to Cincinnati and it was the worst thing in the world? Uh, you know what? Towards the end of that game, um, I was like, and I know they had 10 men, and I, but I was like, I hope we don't concede. <laughs> you anything. wouldn't be able to take it. I would rather just draw nil-nil. <laughs> I'd take a nil-nil right now if it means we don't lose to Cincinnati. But <laughs> no, credit to, I've got to give credit to Orlando. You're doing very well. Um, Played a game extra though. You have, but still, uh, points on the board. So well done. Um, and I've got to say, compared to Atlanta, I don't think Atlanta have played anyone really that good yet. Whereas Orlando, you've had who, a few Who games. are the good teams, though? This is what we've established this episode. It's yeah. like all the teams that we say have got good rosters, they'll be all right. They're currently bottom of the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Columbus lost the last three. They've not scored in them either. They're really struggling at the moment. Mm. too. And you saw the amount of chances they had. They're struggling to score and they're struggling not to concede at the moment, which is a dangerous cocktail to have. It is. Uh, they're outside the playoff line. Um, had a strong start and we kind of thought, yeah, Columbus are back. Mm. I think they make the playoffs though. Oh yeah. And I think that's yeah. all that matters. I think in a recovery year, that's yeah, yeah. all that matters. No, I would I would definitely agree with that. I think there's enough there to tell me that they they recover. But saying that, we we said it last year. They went on that run of what about eight or nine games yeah. without winning and losing most of them. And we said, Oh, they'll be alright, and they weren't in the end, so Well, I'm gonna say they're a brilliant side because that makes Orlando <laughs> look even better. Uh right, before we talk about the uh, the nil nils, um I was gonna we... say we haven't mentioned Atlanta, yeah. Mm. Uh, there was one more game that had goals in it. LAFC 3, SKC 1. Um, LAFC getting back to winning ways after losing El Trafico. Uh, t- uh, first in the West, as we've we've looked at. Um, SKC, it's just not quite clicking for them at the moment, is it? SKC is, is the train that you're waiting on, and it, it, it's coming. It's definitely coming, but it's going to be a while yet. Um, so they're going to have their Seattle syndrome. It's been a little longer than anticipated. Yeah. Um, you have had to pop back to the vending machine to, you know, tide <laughs> yourself over. Um, you, you phoned ahead. You're going to be late for tea, but it's coming. Okay. Right. Okay. Maybe. Uh, no. Well, SK, they get in the playoffs, don't they? So yeah. I don't know what the trains are like in America and Canada, but they're awful here. So um, you can't rely on anything. No, but you can rely on SKC normally. 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 Um, and LAFC, of course, uh, 3-1. Uh, Cifuentes scored. There's a, a good goal. There's a lot being said about Cifuentes. Um, apparently the next big MLS player to that will um, you know eventually leave. And going off his goal, you can't argue with that. Yeah, and Rossi's gone now, officially. Yes. Um, so, uh, like you say, on to the next and up he steps onto the stage. Uh, so, yeah, all eyes on him and LAFC sitting pretty top of the West. Definitely. Uh, right, now it's time to open up uh, once again the Eli Room 101. Careful, don't let anything escape. Yeah, we've still got the referees in yeah, there from the last time. VAR and that lot are in there. Stay in there, Ted Uncle. 
Uh, anyway, um, there were four matches at the weekend that had goalless draws. And I know some people like to say, oh, but, you know, praise the defence. We're not here for that. We have enough nil-nils in the English league. Chicago could be fuming with you, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping away from Well, they've one. only scored five all season. So they're doing well. <laughs> a bit better than what we used to have at Chicago. But another nil-nil for them. These are the teams that are in the naughty book this week. We have got Chicago and LA Galaxy. Atlanta... <laughs> FC Cincinnati, <laughs> uh, Houston and Portland, and New York Red Bulls, and Dallas as well. Four nil nils. That is not what I got into MLS for. Me neither. I had to sit and watch Norwich v Burnley the other day. I came to MLS for an escape. <laughs> yeah. I want boring football. I'll go back and watch in Burnley. I'm watching League One football every week. How do you think I feel? No, yeah, true. Uh, yeah, so we we officially, and you know, people who have listened to this podcast since uh, our first episode know how we feel about Neil No, so this is no surprise. If you're a new listener or watcher on YouTube, then uh, this is us saying, we're not here for Neil Nils. We come to MLS for action, goals, Defensive errors, everything. That Thrills leads and to goals. spells. Yes, not nil-nils. So uh, we are putting uh, this weekend in particular, but nil-nils in general, in the Eli Room 101. Um, but don't, just, let, don't let them out. No, Ever. I won't do. Uh, but a few things from these games. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Red Bulls v Dallas because nothing happened and nothing. <laughs> there's nothing to really <laughs> talk about from that one. Um Houston and Portland, congratulations to Diego Charu, who became the most yes. uh, fouls committed player in MLS history. Uh, and then unsurprisingly. Iron- yeah, unsurprisingly. And then ironically, it was a foul on his brother that led to uh, <laughs> Houston getting a red card. Um, but Portland in ninth on 10 points, Houston in fifth on 12 points. This is kind of a freaky Friday style uh, change yeah. around, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you just experience tells you that Portland will be fine and I'm basing it on nothing but <laughs> it's Portland yeah. and sometimes you just you can overthink things um Portland are a big important team to to the MLS setup with a great stadium and a good roster and and they will be fine and so will Seattle it's just a bizarre thing that it ha- seems to happen every single year yeah uh Atlanta nil Cincinnati nil uh, Brad Guzan ruptured his Achilles tendon in this game at 37 are we going to see, it's quite depressing to talk about actually, but are we going to see him on the soccer pitch again? Because that's a big injury about to get over. Yeah, separating the fact that I don't actually think he's that good anyway. <laughs> um, it, is a, it is a shame. And I know he's very popular with uh, Atlanta United fans. I do think that we need to examine what I said about Can leaving uh, well, in the close season. Because yeah. I said to you, I think he's a better keeper than Guzan anyway. And now he's not there. This would be the perfect transition yeah. time. The the irony of it. The irony of it. First of all, he saved the penalty yeah. before this happened. And then the irony being Told you that, very good. <laughs> that when Guzan was coming off injured, you had last year's replacement, but he was on the pitch, but for the other team. Mm. Um, apparently, they are in talks with Josh Cohen, who's been at Maccabi Haifa in Israel. He was the footballer of the year in Israel last year, and he was goalkeeper. I don't know whether that says, you know... I, I could be footballer of the year in Israel. Yeah, but as a goalkeeper, that's impressive. You <laughs> should see me. <laughs> um, it is leaves Atlanta fourth in the East, uh, unbeaten at home still, so we'll take that. And Cincinnati are in the dizzy heights of 12th now. Um, and I guess finally Chicago nil, LA Galaxy nil. Um, the, there was a lot of... Uh, they must have been so cold. It... Coldness that only us in the UK could understand yeah. in April. Uh, every player, pretty much every player was wearing gloves. Even the referee was wearing gloves. <laughs> you don't <laughs> see that very often. Uh, LA Galaxy had two goals disallowed. Um, it was rightly disallowed, it, it turned out. But um, LA Galaxy, uh, third in the West. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they, I mean, they didn't score against Chicago, but not many teams have this year. So there's no shame in that. But um, how are you rating them at the moment? I mean, Orlando scored against them, but we'll brush up. Whatever. That. How do I rate LA Galaxy? Yeah, they're start. They've done quite well. Done, done really well. Um, and you know, you mentioned some of the teams that Orlando had gone up against already versus the likes of Atlanta, who maybe haven't played some bigger names. Uh, LA Galaxy and LAFC being one of them. Um, and I kind of like the LA rivalry at the top of the West. I yeah. like it. I'm here for it. Um, both both teams look really strong. And I think it's the first time that they could genuinely challenge each other. 
Yeah, that is a massive rivalry. And I think to see that, because it's, yeah, we get it three or four times a season, but to get it on an actual bigger scale. Yeah, with, week in, week out with, yeah. you know, teams looking for points to, to chase down LAFC. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the first time Galaxy have kind of been on their, been on their level. Um, I should also, I, I will mention Red Bulls in Dallas, that Red Bulls are third in the East, Dallas fourth in the West. So they are doing very well, but just nothing happened in that game. Um, <laughs> just to have a look at some of the other questions we got then, because we got a lot of questions uh, on teams specifically. We yeah. also got a lot of questions um, about just general topics in MLS. One of the ones I just missed out, which is about Portland, Mark Bateman said, will Portland draw, will, sorry, will Portland, I should say, Portland draw their way to the playoffs this season. They've uh, drawn four in eight games at the moment. Well, we talked about it just then, didn't we? You 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 don't bet against Portland. No. And you know as well from you know MLS experience, if if you're not losing games, you're going to be absolutely fine because there's always someone who is. Yeah, that's right. And I think um, yeah, Portland have just started. They're one of the many teams that have started slow. They, I don't know if there's a hangover after what happened at the end of last season, but. Uh, you know, you, you'd rather draw games than lose them. So maybe it's not the worst thing. But Portland, um, uh, can we say they'll have Seattle syndrome? I don't think that'll go down very well. I don't think that'll go down well. They'll have, uh, you know, Portland tend to make the playoffs. So they'll a have... Cascadia cough. <laughs> yeah. They, they've got more of a Cascadia cough. Well, if you're not losing, it's not a disaster, but we're not winning. Mm. Uh, but they'll be fine. They'll get over it. <laughs> God, we talk some rubbish. <laughs> uh, right, let's have a look at some of the other questions we've got. Then. Jimmy King said, outside of Miami and the two LA teams, are there any players slash teams from MLS that you regularly see uh, people from Europe supporting? Uh, also, who do you think the next team to spark some interest globally will be? Uh, will mm. it take a move like Insignia uh, to Toronto to make that happen? Um... I, uh, somebody who lives on this road, walks their dog with a, a Red Bulls coat on sometimes. Ah. Um, so that always makes me laugh. Yeah. Because I just think I want to talk to him and I want to be like, are you actually a fan or have <laughs> you just like been given the coat or like what's the situation there? I don't want to go in too strong and they're like, I, I don't know, clue. Yeah. Um, so I don't know the situation there. But yeah, the Florida teams are popular. Yeah. Um, NYCFC are popular because of Manchester City. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, I saw somebody at a petrol station in a Portland jersey once. I've seen one or two people with Portland stuff. Yeah, actually, yeah, which I admire. If you're following Portland on the on that time zone over here, that's yeah. that's dedication. Um, I think, I think uh, it, we could be looking at Vegas. Vegas might. I think it depends on the, the where the the club is based. And that's why, you know, like Seattle and Portland, are, yes, are two of the bigger franchises in MLS if you are watching from the States. But in terms of Europe and especially the UK, they're not really holiday destinations. So not many people are going to mm. follow them. Whereas, yeah, as you said, Orlando and Miami are. New York is. Uh, LA are. So I think it's based on holiday destinations. People go on holiday. I did it. People go on holiday and they go to a game and they fall in love with the club. And that's mm. that's generally what what happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're right. The, I mean, Portland's top of my list of places I want to go. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Just, and the Cascadia in general and the national parks around it look beautiful. I want to go to the stadiums. But that's because I'm like diehard fan of America and MLS and yeah, I think in general people pop to Orlando and go to Disney. Yeah, and like Vegas to, well, everything that's available in Vegas. And <laughs> so, yeah, but I'd, I'd go, but I think Vegas would be the next one. But uh, it's interesting you mentioned uh, Insignia as well. I think maybe not in the UK, but that'll spark some interest in Italy. So yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Toronto will get a few Like more. the Giovinco vibes. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we had it with Rooney, we had it with Beckham. So. Uh, yeah, I think um, in those countries where those players are coming from, maybe the interest will spark from them. Uh, Andy Walsh, you may remember Andy uh, messaged us a few weeks ago. He's been to uh, watch Orlando. Yes. He went to El Trafico as well. And he went to the Benz at the weekend. He says, do you think MLS teams, and I know what Elliot's answer to this is going to be, uh, should have to play in soccer-specific stadiums? I went to the Benz on Saturday, which is an amazing stadium, but could not see the touchline as it's made for NFL. Mm. Yeah, I've talked about this before. I think my my issue doesn't even stem... Forget Yankee Stadium and forget the Benz. My issue doesn't even... It's before we even get to that. Hmm. It's you want to be in MLS. 
So Don Garber says, yeah, well, you've got to have a soccer specific stadium. So certain teams have had to build one. Yeah. But other teams have just been allowed in without one. There's, that's for me is what, what gets me. You know, Orlando, you could argue with, you know, the original stadium, absolutely fine. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with playing there. Yeah. It was too big. Same with Cincinnati. I thought that was a really good stadium. Yeah. And Nashville. Yeah. Nashville's just fine for me. Annoying that the marks are on the pitch. Atlanta, I could, I can get by. It's a beautiful stadium. Yeah. It's it's colossal. I would rather the team had their own. I'll be honest. From a purist point of view, mm. and I know deep down you're probably the same, but it's a it's a great stadium, Mercedes Benz Stadium. I'd rather Atlanta had their own, and they've got the money to build their own as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's I think it's down to. Don't think, think, let's not even talk about New York. I'm not interested. The difference with Atlanta is is that they have moved in their time in MLS. So it is still technically a new stadium, even though yeah, it isn't yeah. soccer specific. Um, like Seattle, you look at their stadium and, and yeah, it's meant for the Seahawks, but it's a great stadium. And yeah. I think Seattle Sounders do really well there. I think for me, it's when teams are playing in non-soccer specific stadiums, think of New England Revolution, and it's half empty. Yeah, You think, well, you might as well go smaller build your own stadium and uh, like we've seen in uh, Cincinnati, Columbus, Austin, where they can fill the stadium. Yeah. And I think New England Revolution will do if they had a smaller one. Chicago Fire, I know there were a lot of fans there at the weekend, but they've had similar problems since moving to Soldier Field. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that um, it doesn't... It's, it, maybe because I'm a Lance fan, I don't care that much where teams play, whether it's soccer specific or not. But I do think if you are going to choose an NFL stadium, as great as some of them are... It needs to work. Oh, I just yeah. think make make a rule and stick to it because yeah. I don't think you know Orlando had to spend a lot of money on their stadium. So did you know um, Austin to get into the league? Cincinnati, Nashville are on a promise that they'll build a stadium, and you know when you just sort of let other teams in, it, you know it's not even our money and it's annoying. Imagine the owners they've had to spend an absolute fortune on a whole stadium. Yeah. Uh, well, talking about new franchises, uh, David Burleson has asked, what are your thoughts on the first few signings for St. Louis? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, they're coming into the league in the next few years. So um, I'll run through some of them because bearing in mind their sporting director is German. I think this is the, the where they've mainly been looking. Yeah. Uh, you've got Roman uh, Berkey. He's a goalkeeper from Dortmund. So he has played 175 times for Dortmund. It's only really this year and last year that he was not in the yeah. team. He was their number one. Uh, 31 years old, 30 appearances for Switzerland as well. Um, I, I'm quite impressed with that signing. For, it, for, an, for a goalkeeper, not too old. No. So, perfect, you know, perfect age for a keeper, lots of experience. Really like the signing. Uh, João Klaus uh, is a striker. They've signed him as DP. He's coming in from Hoffenheim. 25 years old. He's not really prolific, I would say. He's not scored more than 10 uh, much. He only in two seasons in his in his career. He's a Brazilian uh, but I've got you're probably looking at a change of scenery might do him well. My concern with the German link is that's all well and good. Uh, you know, as David Beckham has found out, you can't have a load of foreign players yeah. for, in an MLS team. So fine to have, you know, your big guns coming from uh, Europe. But obviously you're going to have to balance that out with a lot of homegrowns. Um, Thomas Ostrak, he's come in from Cologne. He's going to finish the season with them in Germany and then sign in the summer. I've got to say, all of these are coming in the summer, so they will be there for yeah. the start of the season next year. Um, he has been injured most of the season. He's only 22, Czech Republic, but he has been injured most of the season. I've got to say, out of these players coming in, there's only him that isn't has been injured and not really played many games. The rest seem to be picking up a lot of appearances, which in any league, that's what you need. You can't be having someone who's picking up a wage and just being injured all the time. No, no, not in not in MLS with the constraints in place. I think the goalkeeper, I remember, you know, we briefly mentioned it uh, before, the goalkeeper's coming in with, with a lot of experience and I think he's going to be a really integral part of, of what they've built there. He's probably, you know, being German, he's going to understand you know, the, the route going forward um, with this management team. But I'm I'm interested to see when it comes to the expansion draft that always fascinates me, you know, who are teams going to go for? Are they using players to trade? Um, there'll be some free agents as well knocking about. There'll be some players available on a free that are good players mm -hmm. um, with MLS experience. So I love a blank canvas in MLS. I love doing a new, uh, like a football manager save with, a, with an expansion yeah. side. It's really good. 
Uh, Selmir uh, Pedro, a Bosnian left back, is the other one. Uh, comes in from Sarajevo. I don't really know much about him. I've got to say, I don't watch the Bosnian league. But uh, going off the appearances, like I said, he's made. He's only twenty four, and he has made most played most of their games the last few years. So that's a good sign. Head coach Bradley Carnell. You may remember he was um, the interim coach at Red Bulls a few seasons ago. Uh, he also played for uh, South Africa in the World Cup. So um, you know he knows the league which is half the battle. <laughs> As we've seen, we have a few other head coaches coming into MLS. I watched the uh, Shabalala goal just this afternoon. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. I love the South African World Cup. It's so good. Um, so yeah, there's uh, that's the info we have in St. Louis. So thanks very much for all them questions. We'll do that again in the next few weeks when there's a lot of nil-nils and we need something to pad the, se- <laughs> pad the episode out with. So thank you very much. If you have got a question for us, by the way, uh, and we'll try and answer it on the next episode or in a future episode, you can email us hello at mls.show or just tweet us at MLS UK show. Elliot Holman, Henry Hewitt, MLS UK show. Okay, it's time for my favourite segment where uh, we find out how terrible I am at predictions. Yes, uh, last time, Elliot, you pulled a uh, game back. You won. Uh, you won the predictions last time. Made it two one. Guess who won this time? You. Yeah. So it's now 3-1. Uh, I've got to say, I've got to say, and I mentioned it on stoppage time last week, but to predict that Inter Miami would beat New England Revolution, that's one of my best it's ones. It's sickening. I was sat, I went I went home to Norwich, which is about three hours away from here, and because um, uh, I went to the Norwich Burnley game, and I was sat with one of my oldest friends, round hers, just us two. We had a f- uh, five guys, burger takeaway. It was beautiful. I was really happy. Yeah. Like, you know, back home, catching up with old friends. We were sat watching Netflix. I was scoffing my face. Oreo chocolate milkshake. Henry texted me, didn't he? Rubbing it in. <laughs> and I just, uh, I've been dreading this for over a week now. Yeah, so that made it 3-1 to me. So we'll see now if I can make it 4-1 over the course of uh, this coming weekend. Um, so the area, there is US Open games this week as well. We kind of covered that on the last Stoppage Time episode. So uh, good luck to all MLS teams in that. Good, as we good said, luck, Chattanooga. Yeah, uh, no. no. You uh, said yeah. Good luck, Tampa Bay Rowdies, who Sam Allardyce used to play for. Oh, stop going on about it. Um, right, this weekend then in MLS, Dallas versus Houston, the original Texas derby in MLS. Mm. Uh, both teams doing quite well this season. How do you see this one going? Should be played in California, this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a tough one. Dallas Dallas with the home edge for me, so I'm going to say 2-0. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. I think uh, Houston have done well, but Dallas should win at home. I think this will be a 3-2, actually. Philadelphia play Montreal. Uh, Philly still top of the East, despite yeah. a loss, first loss of the season. Uh, I'm going to say they win this one 2-1. Yeah, get back to winning ways. Montreal have done well, but I think they'll uh, they'll stumble with this one. I think 2-0 Philadelphia. Can Minnesota at home score past Chicago? It feels illegal to score uh, against yeah. Chicago. Um, I'm going to say one all. I think they will. I think they'll win 2-1. Ooh, okay. Um, DC versus New England Revolution. It's hard because neither of them are in great form. No, but um, New England are in slightly better yeah, form. New England for me, uh, one nil. Um, two one New England. Austin versus Vancouver. Three nil Austin. Oh, big! He's gone in. He's gone in big. Um, I'm going to say two nil. SKC versus Columbus. Both sides that need a bit of a kick up the backside this mm. season. Just popping down to uh, Eloy Rooms one oh one. Wow. Nil nil. I don't think there's enough room to put that in. Nil nil. Really? Um, I think two two. Colorado playing Charlotte. Um, Charlotte haven't really done it away yet. Um, you know what? And I don't know whether I'm just thinking back to when Austin won at Colorado at the start of last season, but I think Charlotte could do it for some reason. A new franchise could get the first away win at Colorado. Uh, one nil. Three one Colorado. Portland versus RSL. Yeah. Uh, if ever a game was made for 3 a.m. in the morning here in the UK, <laughs> that is the one. Uh, Portland, bit of a bit of a resurgence. I'm going to go 2-1 Portland. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go same as the conference final last year, 2-0 to Portland. 
Um, then Seattle, who are in the final of the Champions League against yeah. San Jose. We've not mentioned this yet. It's uh, next week as we record. So uh, good luck to Seattle. They made it to the final against Pumas. Uh, 11th in Liga MX Pumas. So maybe the Champions League curse is uh, is with is, is same in Liga MX as well. But are they going to get up, get back to winning ways in MLS? Uh, yeah, San Jose, I think they will. 2-1. Uh, I'll go 2-0. No. Uh, LA Galaxy play Nashville. Uh, LA Galaxy will win this 3-1. 1-0 mm, uh, LA Galaxy for me. Uh, Miami versus Atlanta. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. Um, Miami back in farm. I'm just going to go 1-1. I don't want anyone to get any points. Um, <laughs> A weather delay until eternity. Is that what you're that, after? I'll take that. Yeah. No, Atlanta are a much better team. I'm going to go 2-0 Atlanta. Orlando versus Red Bulls, New York. Mm. Well, you've you've bigged them up, so I've got to go with them. I've got to go with Orlando. Um, I'm going to go 1-0. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Probably a better bet. Uh, Cincinnati face top of the West, LAFC. I mean, I know Cincinnati are doing a bit better now, but they, they surely can't beat LAFC. I'm going 3-0 LAFC. 4-0 LAFC. Um, and finishing off, NYCFC versus Toronto, which is a bit of a local derby, it's really, classic, isn't it? It's a classic fixture, this, isn't yeah. it? Um, I think New York City win this uh, 3-1. I've got to say, when I say local derby, I mean in terms of North American uh, local yeah. derbies, not quite in the UK, still be like other end of the UK. Um NYCFC v Toronto. Um, I'm going to go NYCFC. I think they'll continue. I think close though. I think 2-1. Just as a little bonus, Pumas versus Seattle. Uh, I think it'll be 1-1 first leg. Go to the second leg in Seattle. Come on, boys. Come on, Seattle. Let's get a win for MLS. Second leg is on the 5th of May. So, yeah. uh, Yeah. Up Seattle. Up the Sounders. Let the Seattle syndrome be gone. (laughs) Um, I think that's going to be the name of this episode, Seattle uh, Syndrome. I like that. Um, right, let us know your predictions for every week. Uh, get in touch with uh, how you think uh, the team's going to do, especially Seattle at Pumas. Uh, hello at MLS.show or uh, tweet us, Instagram us, at MLS UK Show. So um, before we go, we need to find out uh, the player of the game with a changing name. Yes, this is a player who has played in the UK and in MLS. They started their career at Newcastle United. Played for Berry on loan, Norwich on loan, joined Norwich permanently, Wigan on loan, Blackpool, Scunthorpe, Linfield, Livingston, Hibernian, Houston Dynamo, 11 appearances and two goals uh, before retiring at Kilmarnock in 2008. It was, of course... Paul Dalglish. It was Paul Dalglish. I didn't realise he'd managed so many teams. Um, no, I didn't. Actually. How many can you name? Uh, he was manager of who was he manager of in was he USL? He was manager of mm-hmm. team. Was it in Texas? He's managed Houston as assistant, mm-hmm. then Tampa Bay, Austin Aztecs, Austin Aztecs, I was thinking RSL, Austin Aztecs again, Ottawa Fury, Miami FC, two spells there as well. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, forgot about RSL and Miami. Um, yeah, so well done if you got that right. We'll have another game with a change your name on the next full episode of the MLS UK show. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe on your podcast provider. Give us a rating as well. Uh, leave a comment. But if you are going to rate us, there's one rule and one rule only, Elliot. LA Galaxy style, five stars only. Uh, yes, because it does its damage. If you're going to rate us a four, just don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Please like the video and share as well. That really does us... Um, a lot of good and we really do appreciate it Uh, so yeah we'll be back with uh, our latest episode of Stoppage Time which is our bonus podcast if you've not heard that where we look at the biggest news stories in MLS we'll be back next week with that I don't really know what to say I guess we've just got to say see ya